Welcome to the ASMR talk show. The show that feels good to hear. This is an all new ASMR talk show. But don't worry, it's gonna be pretty similar to the old ones. But we're back on the airwaves now. We're in a real true blue public access studio here in Pasadena. And we're really excited to be back. It's been about six months since we've produced any talk shows really since I've been uh, done any kind of media stuff at all. And you know, I've been, I started public access when I was like 15, so this was um, a pretty big break to not be doing anything uh, creative. So it's gone all crazy. And uh, what did I do to fill my time? Well, I worked. Because, you know, you got the free time, you got to make the money. And I've been working pretty hard doing the uh, tour business. Check out the O.J. Simpson tour if you want it. But, uh, you know, I did, July I did about, uh, June I did about uh, 35 people this month. I'm on track to do a little bit more, so it's been a lot. But July 4th, I said, you know what, no more. Today, I'm going to take a day for America, for myself, and uh, not do any tours. And wouldn't you know it, I got two phone calls for two parties of four, but I had to turn them down because I said no. And it'd be weird to be giving an OJ tour while the fireworks were going off and stuff like that. Um, but I, you know, I kind of walked away from some money there and I was feeling a little down about it. And I was going, I was at one barbecue that was up in the mountains, pretty cool nature thing, heading to another barbecue that was in the Pacific Palisades, right by the beach. And I needed to get there before fireworks time. so. You know, I'm like, oh man, I really could have used that 200 bucks, whatever, driving down the road. And I turn on to the PCH, and it's right right around sundown time. They called it golden hour. And it, the sun was setting on the beach. There was nobody around because they were all at their barbecues and stuff. And the weather was just so beautiful. You could smell the salt air. And the people that were around, you know, were all these different facets of America everywhere around. And as I drove to the second barbecue, I thought, you know, people travel to Los Angeles from all over the world. They spend thousands of dollars sometimes to come and to see this. So really, you know, taking the night off, I kind of got off cheap in a way because we're already out here and I got to uh, enjoy the beach and uh, enjoy myself. And that's, you know, kind of what it's all about. Which, and that's, you know, for that matter, why we do public access and uh, why we, you know, donate our time to work on other people's show and help them express themselves. Because if it's something you like doing, then it's always worth doing it. So on that note, we're gonna have a discussion today. This is a practice show. I, I probably think it'll end up airing, but this is a uh, practice show. So we're gonna have kind of a, uh, a preview, if you will, talking about some new programming that's coming up on Pasadena Media. And my guest tonight, if you've watched our old show, there's a place you've always, you've probably already seen him. He also hosts his own show called Truth Noir that will be coming to the, uh, coming to the airwaves here. Please welcome Norm Davis. Hey. Well, hello, Adam. It's good to see you again, Norm. Likewise. See you in this context. And uh, yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to be in a, in a decently run facility, run by honorable people for a change. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can all accomplish here together and uh, what we can all learn. Well, so uh, speaking of learning, when we're preparing for the show, so how we're gonna do it, um, for all of you out there, how we're gonna do it, is uh, we're do my show and then we're gonna do your show after that'll be. So like, yep. this is the new team we're putting together. And we're doing some pre-production. I was on one of the computers doing some stuff and uh, you were standing behind me and a guy walked up to you. And it was one of those things where I was like busy and I wasn't listening. But then I believe, and you don't have to use any names or anything, but I believe he told you he saw a UFO. Uh, yes. And yeah. this was not a provoked really other than to say that you were doing a conspiracy N show. No, you know, it, it's one of those things that happens. Uh, you know, now we've been doing these things for a few years now and uh, now every once in a while people will just come out of the woodwork and tell you stories not even knowing what you do. It's kind of one of those odd uh, sort of serendipitous uh, things that has uh, occurred um, every once in a while. So people will just, um, you know, maybe they pick up on uh, that you have open ears, you're willing to listen to some story, but 
did, was this like a famous UFO he had seen? Did you, did you know what he was talking about? Uh, you know, I remember hearing about a strange sighting in the LA area. Um, he had the date uh, down, and that was uh, November 7th, 2015. And uh, so I, I know I'm gonna go and like check this out and find everything out about it that I can, because I mean, that's just free you know, free stories for the show coming up, so. And a local community-minded story. Absolutely, I'm sure I could like maybe walk down the street and ask people, hey, was there a thing that happened here two and a half years ago that was weird? I like that plan. So this happens to you a lot, though, that people will just kind of tell you about. Um... Every, yeah, I remember before I had a car and I was walking uh, to the train from the other place where we did our shows from, um, on a couple of occasions, people would just start walking with me and asking me uh, various questions about like some kind of odd occurrences. Like, they'd start talking about like the Illuminati or UFOs or uh, you know some stuff of that nature. And so, uh, and they never let on that they had ever seen my show or knew you know anything about what I was about. And so, uh, yeah, I, I've always thought that was kind of odd. You definitely, I've, I've been knowing you for a couple of years, Norm. You definitely, as the years go by, look more and more like a UFO scholar. As really? The days go. I think so. I don't know what it is. I think it's hmm. more of an overall demeanor thing. Like it could be. like one of these guys who would be on one of these UFO documentaries. With Maybe, like your, your own drawings of the it, spaceship. And should I start putting product in my hair like uh, George Suculos from Ancient Aliens? Oh, I don't know him. He's, the, he's like the he's, main he's host. The main guy. He, yeah. yeah. He's the one they make all the memes about. Them. I'm not okay. saying it was such and such, oh. but it was aliens. And you, you, so let's talk about Truth to Heart, because I've always been a little confused if you are just open-minded or if you actually believe this stuff. I imagine it's kind of a gray area. But it's, what's your goal with Truth Noir? What's the show all about? Well, it's a little bit of both. I uh, Originally, when we started it, I had some very specific things that I wanted to talk about, and that was um, you know, for-profit prisons, let's legalize marijuana, like kind of basic overall, why aren't we doing these things that sort of make sense? So not conspiracies necessarily. Uh, well, I would get into, I, I like talking about conspiracies that have actually happened, that oh, people yeah. that people think are conspiracies, but then the CIA, yeah, like the, that. but then the documentation is there and available to be seen. That you know, no, these things actually did happen. Tuskegee experiments, yes. like. You know, the CIA spying on American people, like people have been saying that for years and they've there's always been this, well, they would never do that to us. But then you have people like Julian Assange, Eric Snowden, releasing all of these documents and now there's like this tangible proof that this thing that all the wackos have been saying for a long time has actually been true the whole time. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll do a Illuminati show or I'll do a, a Flat Earth show. I mean, if someone wants to come on and talk to me about it and say, all right, Norm, I'm going to change your mind, do it. I'm what do you think about the Earth flat or round? <laughs> the shape of the Earth, what do you think, flat or round? Well, I think all of the evidence that uh, we've been taught as little kids and certain measurements that have been made and things seem to suggest that it's round. Yeah, okay, good. You scared me for a second. No, I, you know, I mean, there's there's compelling arguments to the contrary that are, that are fun and that um, have been presented to me. But I think the overwhelming evidence to the contrary is more true. Um, like when I talk to people that were snipers in the military and they say well sometimes our targets were so far away and we were using such high-powered rifles and these very high-end scopes that we actually had to account for the curvature of the earth in our uh, trajectories. The thing I don't understand about the flat earth thing is let's say the world was flat what difference does it make? 
how is that going to affect your daily life? How is that going to help you pay your bills? How is that going to help you in your relationships? True. So what is the motivation for somebody to believe in this and push it? Well, uh, I would say it's a long shot, but for example, if it is true, and if it is even down to that level that we've been lied to as a society, if that was the thing that was provable and that got a quarter of the population of the earth to start asking questions about other stuff, I, I think that would be significant about knowing that to be true. Um, otherwise, no, I don't really. I mean, we've been living as a society for thousands of years, not knowing if the earth was round or flat. There was that guy in you know? ancient Alexandria who figured it out. Uh, yeah, I forget his name, but yeah. he... Uh, he measured some stuff and multiplied it. And mm -hmm. Yeah, he measured his height at the time of day when a man's shadow is as long as, as he is tall. And then he measured the, um, the height of the pyramid at the same time of day. And I think from there he extrapolated that at two different times of the year, the, uh, the difference in those measurements represented a uh, circumference of the earth. Oh wow, just like, just like old times. The mic is breaking and we're getting a new one. Okay, I'll just, you know, at this point we can just clip it on, yeah. I got two mics. This is how politicians get mic'd up. They have the whole. Oh yeah. And, no, and six way to the press conference, they have all the different microphones. Fancy. Oh, well that's neat, okay. Um, so what are some of the conspiracies you're liking these days? Uh, well, my, my favorite go-to's for people that kind of aren't into this stuff or think it's all a bunch of nonsense is uh, Operation Northwoods. What's that? Operation Northwoods was a uh, proposal by the Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, submitted to President Kennedy uh, because they wanted a actual boots on the ground war with Russia. Uh, and then the nation of Cuba being their closest ally and very close to us, like 90 miles away or something like that. Um, and so what they wanted to do was stage protests by Cuban nationals, the, hi the hijacking of planes by Cuban nationals to be flown into American buildings. Um, and so this was a thing where they said, well, if we do this, this will make all of the Americans that didn't want to go to war against Russia now feel the need like that that is a necessary thing to do. And Kennedy said, no, I'm not going to allow you to stage an attack on the American people for the purposes of gaining popular support for a war that they don't want anyways. And then he was assassinated. Yeah. I think it was within a few months after that. Now, this is mighty similar to the 9-11 conspiracies. It's fairly identical. But this is a new conspiracy that's coming out? Uh, well, no, Operation Northwoods was... Has this been known about since before it, now? Uh, it, it was speculated at, but now these documents through the Freedom of Information Act have become available. All the Kennedy ones that they released mm -hmm. about the assassination and stuff. Yeah, and, and it's all kinds of stuff. After a certain length of time, um, most uh, secret documents or most classified documents are required to be declassified. Um, but what they've done is forced people to request them specifically. And so um, there's places uh, like the uh, Georgetown University has the uh, National Security Archive, the NSA, um, but it is a depository. An the other NSA. Yeah, it's an online archive of as many of those Freedom of Information documents as they have been able to uh, compile. So it's a great resource for anyone who is uh, skeptical but interested, anyone who wants to put a show about certain concerned topics together. Um, it's been a very good resource. So, so I, uh, I think last time we were having dinner, 
I told you about my conspiracy that I've uncovered about the cigarettes. We're going to talk about this on, on my show, show as okay. well. But we that's can do a little, it here. No, no, that's going to be a little <laughs> teaser. That's, uh, no, because I, I don't know if I can, this is such a big bombshell. I don't know if I can talk in a soft voice. It is pretty it. angering. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, I uh, But I if you've got it, some research and stuff, no, I want to keep it fresh for your show. Okay, cool. Um, speaking of which, what are your goals for Truth Noir? Being uh, here. Well, because it's been I, uh, it's six months of taking classes here and wrangling the old the band back yeah, together. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I'm definitely interested in learning about everything that Pasadena Media has to teach me about using the various equipment. So, on a, a technical standpoint, I uh, I want to continue that. Um, I like the community aspect of it. Of uh, um, you know, being able to meet new people. Uh, you know, we were talking to. Uh, Dan out there who has the Now Man show, yes. um, also uh, kind of a uh, activist um, around town talking to local politicians and people that are concerned about the way things are going in the world. Um, so just meeting those people and helping out with them doing their stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I started this originally because I wanted to um, not be camera shy anymore. Like I had all this stuff I wanted to say, but then I was like, eh, I don't know, then I'm gonna be in front of camera. And, um, which I think is something that would be hard for like just about anyone if you've never done it before. And so, um, well then why, you say, I need to say this stuff, I have to be in front of the camera. Why didn't you try like blogging or like there are other ways to get information well, out there, I'm, so I I'm think not, you maybe wanted to be in front of the camera. Uh, well, I, deep yeah, down. no, I, I did, but um, and also I'm not tech savvy, so like being <laughs> on a computer a, and typing and uploading things and um, all that stuff was certainly not in my skill set at the time, and uh, and I'm I'm working on improving that now. Um, I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to just start dumping truth noir all over the place. Um, Big I mean, dump. Yeah, and just, um, but I mean, it, it, the thing about it too is it is it takes time to do all that stuff, and so, um, but yeah, that is the goal. I want to um, um, develop the show a little bit and uh, make it as good as it can be within these facilities. See if I can't maybe, uh, I don't know, get it on like a, a paid site, like maybe Amazon Prime or something. Okay, I was, I was just, and this is really um, something that we should talk about off the air, if we can, you know, we're all about transparency here. I think Amazon Prime, you can, it, they have like a YouTube type thing that they're building out where you can just like put your stuff on it. Really? I think so. That would probably be better than YouTube itself these YouTube days. YouTube is the greatest website of all time. When they were talking about the internet coming out, and they'd be like, oh yeah, it's gonna be like TV, you're gonna be able to find all these cool videos and stuff. That's YouTube. Plus, I never thought somebody would make a how-to video about like any subject, you know? It's all, it's all right there. Well, they were definitely pioneers in the field. Um, but I'm saying I, it should have stopped at YouTube. No other social media, no other. Yeah. If the internet was just YouTube, it would be but I, amazing I think thing. I think YouTube has gotten a little bit big for its britches in certain aspects as far as um, like you with your show are not allowed to earn any money on it right you, like I mean, you don't have enough subscribers or enough views per unit of time you need so many to, views though to make it my, like it's the, the what you're getting in the bandwidth and the searchability and stuff as a user or as a creator or whatever, it's like, I, it's, it's all, it's free. It's all worth it. So if you don't like, well, like, have you ever like paid money to use, use, use YouTube? No, probably not. I well, know you can. No, so, like, but I also, but I also don't pay money to watch actual TV. Oh, the antenna. They sell advertisements mm-hmm. and they receive massive amounts of revenue that way. Mm, okay, good point. And so, if you're going to show, and, and this is my problem with it, they will still show the ads you can opt on out your them, channel. You can opt out. Uh, can you? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. 
because I, I know I don't put them on like in my videos anymore mm -hmm. and allow them to do that, but yeah. they still show as like side screen kinds of um, things. And you can't opt out of that. I don't know. But, and again, I mean, it, it's a great tool. Um, it, it was certainly the first of its kind. Um, but yeah, and I definitely want to try and explore some of the other avenues that are out there. So, well, yeah, it's all in a good time. We're lucky to have this facility. Absolutely. Here in Pasadena. So what do we got, what do you have to look forward to in Truth Noir? What subjects are you going to be cover, covering in the coming seasons? Uh, well, you know, I think with the uh, current administration, there is no shortage of uh, things to promote humorously. Um, also, um, I mean, just like, a, you know, we were talking about before with all of the people that we've met that have ideas and theories of their own, uh, I want to talk to them and see what they have to say. Um, one of my, I think, short-term goals uh, is that we are in the city where the Planetary Society has its headquarters. I want to interview Bill Nye. I don't know if you would do it, man. I'm not going to say you can't do something, but I've seen people trying to get pictures with Bill Nye. He said no. And this, they have their own TV show? No. It was just how he was like out <laughs> in public. That's true. <coughs> but I also know he charges for like corporate events, like 12 grand. Hmm. So. I'd be willing to pay him $50. You don't feel like that would go against your journalistic principles? Um, well, you know, sometimes people need to get paid for their appearances. I mean, I know uh, at a certain point in time, um, I, I would I would hope to, I mean, if I were appearing on shows and I didn't have time to do other stuff for money, I would hope that there would be something to help offset that monetarily. Yeah, I always feel weird about, about asking if it's a news thing. Well, yeah, and I'm certainly not going to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but... Well, you're, well, you're nobody. It's true. Yeah. You wait till you're somebody, then they pay you the big bucks. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm interested in getting there. That'd be fun to be like a newsreader, not have to think anymore. Mm -hmm. Just show up and read a script that they give you. Yeah. I want to be like an expert guy. Or is they like, you know... Be like the wish, OJ expert? About anything, really. Like, I wish VH1 was still doing those, like, I Love the 80s shows. Oh, yeah. That would be the greatest gig of all time. Maybe not of all time, but... It'd be pretty sweet. If you're some nobody actor, it could be a great, great platform. <clears throat> one of these days. Well, you know, it's one of those things where I'm interested in seeing on what we can do here and doing everything we can, so... Absolutely. Has any of you, has there ever been any, let's talk about the, talk about the positives of it. Let's talk about the negatives. Has there ever been any backlash for your show from a former guest, from a viewer? Um, nothing that I would consider valid. Um, you know, the, the, every once in a while, the, the, where we were doing our show previously, the, the people that ran it would be like, well, you, uh, you can't prove that. And I, I would say, well, that's why I said allegedly. So you'd, you'd hit up against some censorship. Um, I don't know if I'd call it censorship, but they would definitely run a, a card at the end of my show saying, you know, we do not, uh, you know, endorse the statements made on the previous show and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, aside from, you know, kind of weird passive aggressive stuff, I don't, I think everyone has always, had always enjoyed being on the show. Um, I never invited anyone on the show that I disagreed with, you know, that I was trying to put on the spot and humiliate. Like, I, I don't, I'll, I'll do that in my spare time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not doing the tabloid kind of stuff. Yeah, no. I've had a couple people hit me up over the years asking for their interviews on There's a Place, the Ultra, the previous ASMR talk show to be taken down. And I got to say, no. You agreed to be on the show. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, this is my scoop as a journalist, as a documenter of life. I don't know. Do you think that's the right move? 
Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, people need to... It's the slippery slope, right? Uh, people, well, people need to understand, I think, also that, um, that this is your creative project. Like, if you, were, if you were an artist and you were painting pictures and someone said, I, I like your picture, and you said, well, here, I, I like that you like my picture, take it, and then came back and were like, I don't like this destroy it yeah destroy it I, I like I feel like it's that a similar kind of thing to that I agree so I mean there you have it folks if you ever appear on this show uh, it will be on YouTube forever it will follow you around forever so you know I hope hope you come across good I feel like I try to make people <laughs> look good I hope that you liked Norm and that you'll check out his show Truth Noir. We're trying to do what? About every uh, six weeks, we'll knock out two of them. Every five, four weeks. Yeah, I, I know wanna, you want to get up to once a month. I'm not I, quite as ambitious. Well, I, I, yeah. Well, I mean, I would like to do. I'd like to be in here once a month, doing at least one show. Well, I look forward to seeing you once a month. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you very much, Norm. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for tuning in. We look forward to. Uh, catching you on the Arroyo channel, catching you on YouTube. Uh, maybe Amazon Prime is out there. Who knows where things will go. But uh, wherever we go, we hope that you'll stay with us. So until next time, this is Adam Papp again reminding you that there's a place you can go, and it's your mind. Good night.